welcome back to what is relatively a cold garage if I'm honest. As you can see by the roof, it's still very wet in there. Today's video, we're not inside the garage, we are working on the golf and we're doing another modification. So, some of you may know that the suspension on the golf is a bit um, soft, a bit boaty, you know, a bit, 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 bit rolly when you go around the corners like this and then it dips and it dives a little bit. Um, <coughs> As I may point out by this excellent document that I have here from one of the suspension places that I've got one of the parts from <clears throat> When your shock absorbers start bouncing on a straight road, rolling on a corner or nose diving when braking, they need to be changed Good! Because we're changing all four corners and we've got some lowering springs! So we're going to lower it! So that's what we're doing in today's video Let's go have a look at the bits we've got and the tools we're going to use so there is Project Nightmare, I mean Project Shed. It does look good there, doesn't it? Yeah. it? It stands well. I'm quite impressed with how it stands. Let's have a quick look at the tools. Uh, so we've got half inch uh, socket set, we've got impact gun, breaker bar and torque wrench, bit of WD, obviously jack and then some stands, plus whatever else I'm going to end up needing, but that's what I can see me using off the top of my head. So then we have the suspension and we've split it to two sides. So we have the rear dampers, the rear bump stops, they are the rear top mounts and they are the rear springs. These are progressive springs just like them. You notice that there's more coils at one end and then less coils but wider apart at the top. So these coils take all the little knocks and bumps as you're going down the road and then them ones they take the big hits. So progressive springs. Moving across obviously we have the front um, dampers there, we have the top mounts, and then we have the front springs, ones all the way around to the one there. So that's what we have there. Look how good, look, it's all new as well. I must say massive thank you to Kieran for providing the rear dampers, one of the rear fronts, the top mounts, the bump stops, and then the top mounts there. All I bought is one, one, one strut and the springs. Massive thanks to Kieran. So I am going to start by cracking off all of the wheel nuts um, so they're nice and loose on all four corners but then I'm going to do just the fronts, get it in the air and then I'll do the rears after because I haven't really got much room to work on the rears. Um, so I'll do the fronts, drop it, pull the car forwards and then do the rears. But first we need to measure, somehow measure the gap in the arches. And I'll be honest, I don't have a tape measure so I don't really know how I'm going to do it. Uh, I need some sort of ingenious solution. My solution for now, until I... Um, get some tape measures or something like that is for a start if you use the finger method put three fingers in there and touch the top of the tire <coughs> what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna measure this tie wrap from the top of the rim there and i'm gonna cut it off there and then after i can measure what that is and then when we get the new one and it's dropped a bit we can get another tie wrap cut it and we can measure that as well so that's what i'm going to do on the front and rear so as you can see at the moment with three fingers on the front but on the freaking back it's massive! Look at me all landing! Look! Da, 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 da. That's four fingers and loose. Just to show you, look, here's the big primer can from Halfords. And there's movement. So, loads of room. So, I'm going to cut these um, cable ties and that'll be my measure and we can measure them later. So, at least we'll know how much we've dropped it by. And those that are wondering, those springs are 40 mil springs. But I have a feeling we're going to drop more than 40 mil on the back. Or I certainly hope, anyway. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my paint in the back and cut them tie wraps and then break all them nuts off. That's the plan. So I've cracked off the wheel nuts with my breaker bar and a 17 mil socket. And now I'm just stacking the car up on the beam so I can get the wheel off the floor. I'm also going to need to pop the bonnet as well so I can undo the top mount bolts. So, I'll just want to quickly show you. Yeah, we're jacking up on the beam. So I can sit the axle stand at the side of it. And once I've got this off the air, off the air, in the air, off the floor, there we go. Look at the, look at the drop in this arch, it's ridiculous. I wonder if I'm on the original suspension, that's why it's so freaking soft. It could very well be. The wheel's still not off the floor yet. Come on. Keep hitting my house. Come on, come on, come on, come on, faster, faster, oh, oh, nope, bloody hell, 
that arch gap now. You can get a full family of Eskimos living in there. He's that big. Oh. Right, it's off. Just, oh, just. Just off. Right, I'm sitting to stand underneath. Back in a sec. So the car is now in the air. I just want to say when you're jacking up the driver's side, just be wary of the preheater just there for the diesel. Don't really want to be damaging that with your jack, so just be careful. Ooh, drop the keys. Where are you putting your, your bits and bobs when you're jacking? So I've just got the last one to undo on this wheel. I think it's that one. Are you going to come out or are you going to... There we go. No one's going to whinge at me because I'm not using the tripod. I'm using my phone because it films in much higher quality. And my tripod for my phone doesn't come till Christmas. Because I'm actually getting a gimbal. So then the quality will loads better. There we go. Tire off. Tell my car's not been driven for a couple of days. And look how good this tire is. Right, let's just gently put that on the floor. There we go. That's gently. So, we can get our first look at our suspension. So we're going to have to pull these pipes off that's um, attached to the side of the strut. And we've got a big bolt there that we're going to have to undo. That one. There you can just, there we go, that one there. We'll have to undo that one because that's what's going to allow the strut to come out of here. We're going to have to use our jack to support underneath here so it doesn't just drop to the floor and break things. Uh, another reason why I'm doing one, one corner at a time. Uh, and then literally up here we have this top cap which should come off like so. Which really reveals one knot. And then that strut tower should drop out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up all these pipes and everything so it's loose. So I can then undo that. Um, some of you guys would be replacing the springs on this. Obviously, I'm not. I'm going to be sticking new ones on. So later on when I stick the springs on there, I will show you how you remove your springs off that one as well. But to start with, I'm not. I'm going to pull the strut tower straight off. So I've pulled these out, as you can see, they literally pop off. That one wasn't actually attached up at the top because it's a different pipe than the original one. But I pulled it away from the bottom one because it was in that one. So I've just covered the bolt and some WD both sides. There's a bolt one side and a nut. The other, you can just see it there. Uh, I haven't put any grease or WD in the top one, so I'm leave that as it is for now. And hopefully undo that nut with my impact gun uh, so I can then tap that bolt out. But I'm going to take the nut off, undo the top one, on the top one up there, and then tap that out, and then it should come out as one then. Well, that's for the plan anyway. That's what I'm hoping. That is what I'm hoping. I get all excited. Freaking hell. Right, so the bolt's out. It was a 18mm nut and 19mm bolt. The top bolt up there was a 21mm, which is why it's dropped. Um, this is hugging this very tight. So I'm hammering the, the, the crap out of this to try and free it off a bit. Um, I might have to get like a, a pry bar in the back of it because it's a, a split joint. It compresses around the actual tube. If I get a chisel in the back of it, try and pry it out a bit. Um, but at the moment I'm just tapping it off to see if that's going to help. But hopefully next time you see me, I will have it off. There was a slight change of plan because that was tight. Alright, you can just see the split. You can just see the top of it, just there. You know, we're going to focus today. You can kind of see the split. So I had a... Where's my pry bar? Pry bar's down there. I had my pry bar. Focus. There we go. In the back of it, which split it a little bit. I had to put the nut back in the top to stop it from dropping the whole time. Because I needed something to fight against. And then I was smacking this, loosening that, and wiggling everything. <laughs> Wiggling everything, um, and then it finally dropped. And those are wondering why this is like this. That's what happens when you put bigger tyres on than what it's designed for, and it cuts away at the inner arch. Um, so it's now loose. Look, oh, no, no. So now I can do that top bolt again, oh, which I left loose to be fair, and then we'll set the strut out. So here we have the old one off the car. And what we're going to need is we're going to want this dust cover because I don't have a new one of them and this rusty cup <laughs> that it sits in. <sighs> so, we need to attach the spring compressors on, 
squash the spring, undo the nuts, take it off. So spring compressors, make sure you keep them opposite each other and if you have three that's even better because they will like want to spin around. Uh, what I will say, these are worse than a nuclear winter, they are worse than paper cuts, they are worse than your ex-girlfriend. These are the worst things in the world and will destroy your life and kill you instantly. So make sure you're giving them the full attention. If they start moving, make sure you slacken them off and then re reposition them. So I'm going to use that bit there on my input impact gun and squash it in a bit to make the spring loose and then I can undo the top bolt, remove the spring and strip it down. So we've squashed the spring enough just to take the tension off the top mount. And you can see it's all just falling off now. There's the bearing, there's the cup that we need. The spring itself should pull off. Like that. Let's drop everything, it's fine. And then the dust cover. Pull off as well. Oh, and the bump stop, we need a bump stop as well. So, needed to strip it down, so we need dust cover, the bump stop, and then the cup. So move it all around. I'm going to take the spring compressors off that spring now uh, and let's see how it will look. So we have the bump stop on there. I just need to add the dust cover. On the top of the spring at the moment I have sat the cup that I got off the other one. The new bearing and the new bearing sits inside there. And that will drop onto the spring which will go over the top of the damper and the nut will hold it on. <sighs> I just need to put the dust cover on and put all this together. I know I'm still doing the first freaking stroke, but I want to give a massive thanks to a guy called Andy, Andy Biggs. Uh, I've been messaging him with some questions because I'll tell you what, I've done a few suspension changes. But the freaking, the bearings and that that go in, in this car, they can go in any direction and the freaking, I'd have built it wrong without his help. I definitely would because everything can go two ways and it's, it's spinning me out a little bit. But massive thank you to you, Andy. I hope you're watching the video. So here we have the built up stroke. So the dust cover's on, the bump stops underneath, the cup cover, what the cup, whatever you want to call it, the spring cup is on. That is the way that the um, mount needs to go, the top mount. The bearing is underneath, uh, and then obviously I put the nut on top of it. So all I need to do now is make sure the spring is sat correctly, which I believe that it is. You know, there's a, yeah, it is a lot of dint there where it sits. Take them spring compressors off. Chuck it back up in the car, grab it on the top nut so it can hold it for now. And then you'll notice on the back of this is you've got this piece of metal here. That piece of metal slots in that gap at the back, so that's when you know it's facing the right direction. So let's do that. So the new strut is in place, as you can see. Let's make sure everything's sat right. Yeah, the springs are still where it should be. Got the top nut on, but not tight because I've been manoeuvring this around, got it in the hole. You can just see that that hook thing there at the back when it focuses, there we go. Hang on. That will drop into the slot, hopefully. So I'm going to put my jack underneath the bottom ball joint and gradually, um, hopefully, lever this up and squash it in. But only time will tell. So, Alright, I shall come back to you shortly. So jacked up on the bottom ball joint, like I said. And then I lined the spike up at the back, which you can just see. I'm going to focus, just see it there. And then put it under pressure and then tap this metal here. Do, do, do. And then it went doof and it sunk. So it's now in nice and tight. Now I can put that bolt in. I've already tightened that nut up there, so that's nice and tight, but I'll check it one, one last time. Um, plumb all your pipings and pipes and connect them in and stuff and put your bolt in and ta-da done put your wheel on done and there we are all done for one corner still got three more corners to do so it's just a case of putting the wheel back on, on this side and moving on to the others now you've already seen me do one front side so I'm going to do the front side off camera because obviously there's no point in seeing it twice um, and then we'll move on to the back once we move the car around so I'm going to do the other side now so welcome back to the day after uh, I started filming this. So day two of doing suspension, mainly because it got dark really quick. Obviously I could have finished last night. Well, yeah, I had issues with the driver's side. So I'm gonna quickly show you my issues. I fixed them all, but I'm gonna show you what I had anyway.
So as you can see, I now have a brand new <laughs> track rod end. That's because I couldn't get the freaking hub to drop down far enough. So I started undoing, I've got the anti-rollbar to tighten up. Started undoing like things like that and the anti-rollbar. Just try and drop it more, but I ended up um, not being able to take the nut off it and then ruining it. Um, oh, there it is, hold on. There it is. Chopped the nut off, um, but then there wasn't enough threads left, so I couldn't actually put it back on. So I had to get a new one of them for the cost of 15 quid, but it's another wear and tear part, you know, that was actually a perfectly fine condition, but I put a new one on anyway. Um, all I need to do now is click the pipe in and put that anti-roll bar bolt back in, and then put the wheel on, and then finally this front's done and we can start on the rear. So I'll drop the front on the floor, ready, so I can roll it forward to give me more room for the rear. Would anyone like a sneak peek of what it looks like at the moment? Don't get me wrong, it's still going to settle a little bit and it will drop a little bit lower, I think. If not, it's settled already. Ooh, yeah. Looks good, does look good. Ready? I'll spin the camera. Oh yeah! Look at that! That's the front lowered. We've still got, when we knock out the height on the rear, the front will come down a little bit more. Pretty confident of that. So obviously the rear's holding the body up. But look how good it looks! <sighs> two and a half fingers but again like I said it'll drop a little bit more and it'll drop a bit more when I put the rear springs in oh so happy now time to pull the car forwards and get the back up in the air Woo! so we've gone and got the back end of the car up in the air as you can see it sat on the strongest part of the sill and I jacked up a little bit further behind I haven't jacked up on the beam like you would do on some cars let me just get and show you the beam so the rear beam is there in the middle of the screen now like normally I would jack up and like put axle stands on that but because we are removing the dampers and the springs and that we need the beam to be able to move and drop down so that's why I haven't got the stand on it this time oh cracking me so now it's time to um, get these wheels off let's get them off so here we have the rear assembly there are three bolts involved one it's just E there as you can see that's the nut and the bolts on this side the other two are there one I can't get my finger there and then one on the other side just over there we're gonna need to spray some WD-40 on them top two probably some WD-40 on the bottom one then impact gun them off what I've done is I've used my jack to support the beam, it's not its not actually lifting the car up, it's just supporting the beam because when I remove that bottom bolt or when I remove the top two, it will drop or it should drop because that's how you get your springs out. So I'm going to undo, look at the state of that now, you know, it still works but it's very bouncy. We have nice new ones to put in. So let's undo these bolts, let's get these dampers out. I'm going to start with the top two, but well, I'm going to start by WD and everything first and I'll come back to you shortly. So we're doing the top two, there are 16 mils. Uh, I bent this plastic out of the way with a screwdriver just so I can get onto that second one because it was a little bit awkward, but you know. We're on there now, just got this bottom one to take off. But this side of the this side of the suspension is um loose now. And she's out. The bottom bolt was a 16 mil as well. So nice and easy, 16 mils all around. And that's a very soft damper. So to get the spring out, I literally Bounced on the beam a bit and then let it drop out. So now we have the old on the left and the new on the right. The only thing I need to take off is this little spring cup just there to mount onto that side. Uh, I've been advised to put the closer together coils on the bottom. It is quite a bit shorter that one, isn't it? It's pretty side by side. Uh, that's about side by side. Yeah, look, it's a good coil difference there. And again, Variable, not variable. And that damper was like very soft. Right, so need to build it up now. So that nut comes off the top of there. This one bolts onto there, just like it did on there. Might need to take that off as well, whatever that cap is. Also need to add this on first with this cup, like to match that one you see. So I'm just gonna build it up now. So there we go, the spring has the spring cup in it. That, so let me explain. The bump stop slides into the top of uh, the mount, like the bush. Then that slides into the bottom of the bump stop, so that's like all one now. And then obviously there's the nut at the top, which I've tightened and put the cap on off of that one there. 
So that's ready to go back on the car. I'm gonna try and put the spring in first. Don't know if I can do it with one hand, but I will give it a go. So the spring. No, I'm not, I know I'm not. I'm not far off. So there's a cup built into there. You can see the round bit. So I need to make sure the spring sits right in that cup, and then this bit, this rubber bit, sits onto this bit when it focuses. Focus onto that in that, shall I say? Uh, and then we can put the damper on. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll come back to you. So there we have the spring sat in its cup, sat in the top cup. That's bolted in at the bottom. You see the bolt somewhere? Maybe. I think you see the bolt. Yeah, uh, nearly dropped the camera. And then they're bolted in up there as well. I just need to slide that back up onto that cup, which I'll do with two hands in a second. Whew! Now I've got the other side to do. I am naked and cold. Do you think I use enough tools? <laughs> So here's the crap that um, I've took off. <laughs> the back ones aren't too bad, they press and come out on their own. This front one here, uh, it squashes quite easy with my hand and then comes back out on its own weight. So it's very soft, but this one's even worse. Uh, I just fall, pulls out in my hand and squashes back in in my fingers. It pulls out in my hands. So, hang on. <laughs> Fail. Got it. So this should realistically dint this garage. But no, look, it just squashes in with no effort at all. So, naked they are. One thing I forgot to mention with these front mounts, these are the old ones. What happens over time is these squash up and balloon out, like they've ballooned out. Um, so it actually lowers your car, but obviously it means there's movement then in the suspension. And the bearings on top, I've just checked, they're a little bit clicky. So, they're alright, but we've got new ones now, so it don't really matter. One thing I forgot to mention with these front mounts, these are the old ones. What happens over time is these squash up and balloon out, like they've ballooned out. Um, so it actually lowers your car, but obviously it means there's movement then in the suspension. And the bearings on top, I've just checked, they're a little bit clicky. So they're all right, but we've got new ones now, so it don't really matter. So I'm not gonna end the video just here yet, cause I, I wanna let them settle for a couple of days, what it looks like. So that's what it looks like at the moment, but I want to obviously measure them properly when I get a tape measure, see what the drop is. But they're still settling, the back's still dropping, which is good because it was so high. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'll come back to you in a couple of days on, on this video, um, so you, you guys just continue watching. Hey guys, so just took it for a bit of a spin up and down the roads, um, well done about a three mile loop around where I live. Um, it doesn't roll in the corners which is nice and it does actually hand, handle good on a relatively smooth road Even with corners, but the ones that are the back roads right near the ones that are really bumping I'm proper bouncing around in the seat like bah, 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 proper chucking me about It's like hmm probably the reason why I don't like lower suspension because it's much firmer I mean there's firmer and then there's taking the mick and god knows what it's, them, them roads would be like on coilovers They'd be ridiculous because this has got stock struts. It's just the springs that are different so I've let the suspension settle for the last couple of days uh, and what I've done is I've gone and re-measured with the uh, cable ties but I've actually found the... what's the word I want? My tape measure! I found my tape measure. I what it's called. So I've actually measured the drop. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, the cable ties and let you know what drop we've had. So here we have the cable ties. Um, front are white, rear are black. The one on the left each side of the left ones are the before and then obviously the shorter one is the after so this is the gap between the wheel rim and the arch so what I've actually done is they're the bits I cut off I've measured the difference and the front has actually dropped 20 mil and the rear has dropped 40 mil now I'll be honest I think that's down to the top shock mounts because they was very worn on the front so they were smaller to start with, so the car was lower to start with. Um, so I actually think that that's you know, that the reason why it hasn't dropped 40 mil on the front. Plus, if they say they dropped 40 mil, it doesn't mean it actually dropped 40 mil. I think it is a bit of a guesstimate. But they have actually dropped 40 on the rear, which is nice. So there we have the results. We have dropped 20 mil on the front, 40 mil on the rear. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the body kit Hopefully over the next couple of days you can see my garage is wet through and it's raining outside at the moment and I'm back at work. 
Um, so hopefully we'll get the body kit fitted soon. I have got the rear skirt already fitted. I've just got the skirt, side skirt and the spoiler to do. Once I've done that, obviously I'll unveil the car uh, in the body kit video and you'll be able to see what it looks like lowered now with this new kit on. So I'd like to thank you very much guys. Thank you very much for watching. I know this has been a long video. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've appreciated it. And we've done a mod on Project Shed. It took quite a lot of time, but we've done a decent mod on Project Shed. So, I want to say goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, guys.